The more hits we play, the more hits we get. URLradio.net. Stacey Stirp. Kevin Kyes. Let's talk about the seven most ridiculous movie character overreactions. Awesome. You know, blockbuster movies, they need action. Yes. We don't tend to spend $200 million on tickets on a film full of subtle delivery and wry wit. <laughs> we want over the top. Right. So we need characters to do some outrageous things, make drastic decisions, and to scream things while flying slowly through the air. <laughs> As a result, people in movies often wind up making totally illogical and often utterly insane choices just to spice up the movie. Here are some of those people. Johnny Utah in Point Break. Love that movie. I do too. Loved it. Point Break is about a bank robbing bank robbing surfers that are led by Patrick Swayze, who is so sexy in that movie. He is. He is the reason that I fell. Remember talking about, you know, how I had to bail my ex out of jail all the time? Yep. He looked like Patrick Swayze in Point Break. Uh, he was a surfer, druggy dude. It was awesome. I would have bailed him out myself. <laughs> <laughs> so it was bank robbing surfers led by Patrick Swayze and the crime fighting team of Keanu Reeves and Gary Busey. I know. Listen, you, you don't want anybody coming after you, but <laughs> that duo, watch out. <laughs> Now, the moment that we said point break, you're, 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 I'm guessing you're picturing one scene in your mind, and that's where Patrick Swayze jumps out of the airplane with a parachute, and Keanu Reeves, and the ultimate act of reckless badassery, jumps out after him, no parachute. Now, come on. When that happened the first time you saw it, now, I didn't go see it in the movie theater. I didn't either. I, I saw it on saw HBO. It HBO yeah. 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 But the first time I saw it, I jumped the hell out of my seat. I'm like, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? Yep. I mean, you know he's bound to catch him, right? right. He's not just going to fall to but the ground and die. But that was kick ass. Oh, I know. Absolutely. So he hurls himself toward the ground and catches Swayze in midair, and then the two have a shouting standoff as they reach terminal velocity. But to understand how pointless that this decision was, let's rewind a little bit. <laughs> Keanu's character, Johnny Utah, catches up with Bodie at the airport who's loading equipment and cash into a plane. And then a shootout occurs, and Bodie takes Utah hostage and drags one of his friends along with him. So despite the fact that the guy's been shot and clearly dying, it winds up not even mattering because Swayze kicks him out of the plane a few minutes later anyway. The plane and the pilot are perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with the plane or the pilot. And, uh, and get, we're sure that there were some parachutes on board because... Bodie had loaded them for all these people yep. that winded up dying. So he had loaded extra parachutes. Why couldn't Keanu just grabbed a parachute quick and hopped out? Exactly. Um, better yet, he could have used his super policeman powers to tell the pilot to land the damn plane. <laughs> He's a policeman. And while in the air, he could have had the pilot contact local law enforcement to tell him where the guy is going down. And then they could have been waiting on the ground for everybody to to fall down from the ground. That's not the way Johnny done. Utah takes care of business, though. And then that would have been really boring into a movie, right? <laughs> yeah. If all of a sudden he's like, dude, you're so stupid. Pilot, we need to land this plane. <laughs> Call local law enforcement. Have him waiting on the ground of the vicinity. You know where he's going to be landing at. He needs to catch him himself. Oh, absolutely. He's got a score to settle. Yep. So that's number seven. Number six is pretty much every adult and karate kid. <laughs> <laughs> In the first film, the bad guy is the evil karate dojo Cobra Kai, uh, led by star pupil Johnny Lawrence, and the owner of the dojo is John Kreese. Yep. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg. So Lawrence and the Cobra Kai gang are harassing and bullying Daniel until they agree to settle their differences in a karate tournament. But when Mr. Miyagi goes to Kreese's dojo to ask him to ask his students to lay off Daniel, since apparently Mr. Miyagi is the only adult that can assert any kind of influence. <laughs> like, even though Ralph Macchio has a mom. And the police. He, he never talked to her. Or, and the police, yeah. Yep. After you get the crap kicked out of you, you could have called the police. Restraining order. Right. But anyway, Kreese sort of laughs it off and says that Daniel, if Daniel and Miyagi don't show up for the tournament, his gang is going to beat the crap out of both of them. Which is a typical um, dojo owner's reaction, <laughs> if he finds out one of his students. <laughs> so imagine you're a grown-up and a war veteran like Kreese. And you have saved up enough money to open up your own karate training center. Do you really put all that on the line to take the student side in a high school dispute? <laughs> Do you really risk it all? <laughs> but then in the sequel, we learn that Miyagi fled his home because of his best friend Sato challenged him to a fight to the death over this woman. So in a mere normal world, after about 40 years, if somebody returns and Sato now a wealthy businessman would probably just 
Be Whatever. Like, hey, we were young. Right. Yep. Nope. Sato decides to drop everything he's doing to resume the feud over this woman who still, although living blocks away, has had nothing to do with him for 30 yep. years. So they're still going to fight <laughs> over this woman. So that's number six. Number five is pretty much everybody in Free Willy. Never seen the movie. I haven't either. Isn't that crazy? But the owner of the park had a million-dollar insurance policy on Willie and is actively trying to kill him so that he can collect on it, despite the fact that he probably spent more to buy the whale in the tank for it to live in <laughs> than the million dollars. So when, when this kid Jesse discovers the evil plot, he immediately declares there's no time and decides he's going to free Willie. Well, this is one of those films where absolutely no authorities seem to exist at all. <laughs> like, everything falls to this little kid for some reason. It just doesn't make sense. There's a lot of money at stake. There's a crime being committed because this guy wants to kill an endangered species. In a world where beach whales get immediate news coverage just for washing up on shore, this kid could have easily gone to the press yep. or gone to police <laughs> and told them of this plot. But no, this kid decides he is somehow going to get this whale into the ocean safe. He will free Willie. He will free Willie. And Willie's probably like, dude, I don't want to go back to the ocean. Like, this aquarium's rocking. I yep. get fish every day. And Willie probably would have been able to stay there had this kid just gone to the police and said, this guy's trying to kill off this whale. Guy arrested for insurance fraud or whatever it might be that he's arrested for, attempted murder of an endangered species. <laughs> and Willie could have stayed in that aquarium just performing Absolutely. for people having a good time. But now this kid is going to risk life and limb. And where the hell are his parents? Well, and obviously, like, uh, it didn't work the first time because wasn't there like three free willies? Yes. Willie yes. seems pretty stupid to me if he's getting caught all the time. <laughs> How does he keep winding up back in captivity? Stoop. They should call it Stupid Willie. Stupid Willie. <laughs> Beat Willie with the club. Okay, and then the number four is Kristoff on The Truman Show. Did you ever see The Truman Show? I, I, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So when reflecting on The Truman Show, it's easy to say that everybody in the movie was pretty normal. And by everyone, we mean the entire planet Earth. Be because everyone watched this little baby grow into a man inside a TV studio while being lied to his entire life and never said anything. Mm. <laughs> Like, this is clearly a human rights violation. <laughs> this kid is a captive. He's a slave. He's a slave. Uh, think about how many laws have to not exist in that universe for that show to happen. <laughs> it's apparently legal for a person or a corporation to imprison a person as long as you feed them. Yep. It's legal to film and record somebody without their knowledge, apparently. It's legal to defraud a person out of every possible thing he could have in his life. <laughs> From a real marriage to a real career. Behind the reality show, though, was Kristoff, a man who secured the rights to this kid's life. Is that Ed Harris's character? I think Is he that... might be right, okay. yeah. So that just screams supervillain. Oh, yeah? So when everything else fails to stop Truman, once he finds out from getting in the boat and sailing to freedom, remember, he's like, oh, my God, this has been going on. He tries to get out. Yep. So the normal reaction of Kristoff would be like, better go buy another baby for a sequel. <laughs> no. I'm going to kill him yep. on national TV by creating a gigantic storm. Hopefully he will drown and die. Why Doesn't not just, any, yeah. no, just go develop a new TV show, man. <laughs> Let Truman go. Uh, number three on the list is Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed and Rocky three. Pretty much every Rocky yep. movie, but at the end of the training montage, you get a very weird sequence where Apollo and Rocky are doing sprints on the beach. Now, Rocky runs a little faster than Apollo, and Rocky, after all, is a fighter in training, whereas Apollo is retired. A fact that Rocky celebrates a lot. He beat the <laughs> old man. But first he pumps his fist and he screams, and then he jumps into the ocean, screaming, arms raised, and then the two men embrace almost very passionately, like lost long lovers who have long presumed each other dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then they jump around in the water together, clapping and splashing. And then they embrace again and howl at the sky, whirling around and around until Rocky raises his fist in the sky in one final freeze frame moment of triumph. Here's the thing. They're just training. Yep. Like he hasn't even fought yet. You And you also didn't mention their rendition of Summer Nights that they <laughs> sing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's nice that Rocky out-trained his old retired trainer, yeah, but holy job. crap, really? <laughs> America
Americans didn't even celebrate this much when we won, when we beat Germany in the war. <laughs> okay, number two <laughs> is Beauty and the Beast, the Enchantress. The, the cartoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never seen it. Okay. So we learned that the reason that the prince was turned into a beast was because an enchantress disguised as an old woman came to his castle looking for shelter on a stormy night. When the prince turned the woman away, she revealed her true self and cursed him for his shallowness. So the curse was only true love could then turn the prince back to normal, which would appear to be impossible since she transformed him to the equivalent of like a big hairy monster butt crack. Yep. It was like ridiculous. <laughs> But here's the thing. She also changed every single one of his servants into an inanimate object. Why? We couldn't possibly tell you. It wasn't any of those people who did anything to the lady at all. For all she knew, many of them could be indentured servants just trying to get by. They might really hate the prince and think he's a complete (laughs) ass. But yet she decided to turn them into candlesticks. Or a teapot. So why? Wouldn't it actually have been worse punishment for the prince to be surrounded by regular people who just didn't want to work for him mm-hmm. anymore? Instead, these servants were pretty much, they had to stay with him. Where else is a talking candlestick going to go? <laughs> right. <laughs> so they have guaranteed him company oh, yeah. yep. for the next however long it is, eternity. Doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Now, I never saw this movie, but The Wizard. Oh, right. Yep. So the number one overreaction is a kid named Haley. So let's go over a few things here. The kid they call the wizard is apparently traumatized by the death of his sister to the point where the only word he will say is California. So his mother has him institutionalized, which Fred Savage is against. So to voice his distaste, Fred apparently breaks out his brother and takes him to California without knowing where in California he wants to go or even why the hell he wants to go there. They meet this gal named Haley, and she tells them about a video game tournament. Yep. Which, by the way, has a $50,000 purse. After she tells them about this tournament, um, she notices how good the wizard is. And when they get to Cali, she informs them that she deserves a cut of that money. So if you're a parent looking for your runaway children, it's likely you hire somebody to find them, right? If your kid's gone missing, you're going to hire somebody to find them. Which is, of course, what the mother does. Well, the guy is the bad guy in the movie, so they portray him as being a little unscrupulous, but you can't lose sight of the fact that his function is actually to take home this kid before he gets raped or murdered by a transient. Like, that's his job. So the guy catches up to them and grabs the wizard, but when Haley sees that her her gateway to money is being snatched up, uh, she screams that he has molested her. So the cops then rush in, and arrest the guy, violently wrestling him out of the room, while Haley and the two runaways get away, smirking at the clever plan of accusing this man of a felony. They put him on a sex offender registry now for the rest <laughs> of his life and have ruined his career yep. in law enforcement. But hey, it's all over a video game tournament, right? <laughs> and there's a happy ending. Little bow put on the on the top of that package at the end of that. <laughs> That's when they had to go to the video game tournament and play uh, Super Mario Brothers with the Nintendo Power Glove. Oh, my God. How old was that? Like 85 or oh, something? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It had to be pretty old. Yeah. And that, I think that was the first time you ever got to see the Power Glove. Like, that was, oh, my God. Look at that technology. Yep. This must be a huge tournament, mm-hmm. which almost is like, wow, I could see why she would throw this guy to the wolves so he could play video games. <laughs> With it all the cool makes perfect, glove. All makes perfect sense to Absolutely me. perfect sense. So there you go. Now maybe you'll be a little bit more cautious of that when you watch movies in the future. We'll, we'll, we'll be, at least and I will be watching movies. And every once in a while, more often yeah. than not, she'll go, like that'll happen. <laughs> or why and wouldn't I, they just do this? And I said, uh, honey. It's a movie. It's a, it's a movie. <laughs> A guy just uh, shot a fireball from his hand, but you're questioning the 60 foot fall that he, you know, <laughs> that he survived. You're questioning how he couldn't get papers for something. Right. You know what I mean? Really? <laughs> like that would happen. I hear that a lot. <laughs> like that would happen. <laughs> Honey, it's a movie. <laughs> We're supposed to, it's supposed to be totally illogical. <laughs> Do you oh get God. this? Do you understand? Are you even really getting this movie? 
<laughs> well, no, there's nothing. It's a movie. You're not Let supposed go to get it. of reality. You don't need to look at what paperwork he should have filed, or why didn't he just call the police? That doesn't make for a fun movie. Why did he jump out of the plane? There were plenty of parachutes in there. You're like, oh. hmm, that would be fun. How could he catch him? And then ensure that his parachute and Patrick Swayze's yes. parachute don't go off at the same time. And don't get all tangled up. Right. Then they both die. Yep. He was thinking, but he was concerned about the safety of both himself <laughs> and Patrick Swayze's character. Oh, my God. Love it's movies. Really Love I movies. Too. I do, too. Yeah. What's the last movie you watched? Uh, I watched Cop Out. Oh, so you during you, my recovery. Pretty recent. So you watch yeah, a lot of movies. I watched it on HBO. Yeah. That wasn't too bad. I still have I I I've had this movie around now for almost a month. Uh my uh, my Netflix movie that I haven't sent back yet, but I think tonight I'm going to watch it. Uh The Other Guys? Oh, I've heard that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, and I It's, it's like just Mark been, Wahlberg and, and Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Yeah, yeah. and I, it's just been sitting around and I I haven't watched it. Like mm. my my whole thing is we'll get Netflix movies. And when I actually put them on my list, I'm like, yeah, I totally want to see that movie. And then by the time it comes. Like, we got two of them on Friday. The Town. Oh, I've heard that's really good with Ben Affleck. It's going back tomorrow. I'm not even going to watch it. No way. Yeah. yeah. And Salt. Oh, see, I won't watch anything with Angelina Jolie. I'm a big Angelina Jolie hater. Really? Yeah. I'm sorry. I think she's well, lived her life as a hypocrite, and I don't what? care for her at all. The only movie that I could honestly say, wow. Mm-hmm. I, I, I actually enjoyed her in was uh, Gone in sixty seconds. You know what? I I, I own that movie. I like and she that. She wasn't that uh, Hackers. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, that was like one of her first movies she was in. Yeah, I just don't care for her at all. I'm she sorry. just rubs me the wrong way. Would you punch her? I would punch her in the face. Wow. I'd say that one's for Jen. <laughs> for Jen? Jen and Jennifer Aniston. Oh, they, the fact that she. Right. Weeks before would go on and talk about how she's never talking to her father again because he cheated on her mother and then steal somebody's husband. Yep. Hey, hypocrite. Hey, pot, meet the kettle. Like, yeah. So just for that, I would punch her in the face. Good for you. Yeah. I'd pay to see that. That would be a good pay-per-view, wouldn't it? All her spy things are choreographed. I'd like to see her just street scuffle. Yeah. I think I might and, be able to take her on you that. could do it. Yeah. Tie you at the wrist or tie you at the hands. Give right. you guys each a fork. <laughs> See what comes out of it. This is not going well. <laughs> hey, uh, coming up, speaking of that, predicaments okay. are, are coming up here next. We're going to wrap up the show with predicaments. So, uh, And if there's anything you want to hear, get your request in. Email me, Stacy at URLradio.net. That's S-T-A-C-Y at URLradio.net.